Hello. Hello, and welcome to Engines and Unfinished Business. <laughs> uh, today we fix the rusty <laughs> fuel line. Now that we've got the sump sorted, the next thing that was stopping us putting the car back together was this fuel line that is very crusty. I could get another one from Toyota for something like £140, but instead just bought a bunch of 200 series AN hose and fittings. I'm hopefully going to be able to build this out of this. So first up is the banjo bolty thing, got one of them, and for the other end I'm um, not going to be recreating that because I couldn't find out for sure what kind of um, seal it used. So instead I've got a, I think it's this one, 8mm compression fitting that will go over the hard line that will then go onto this hose. I've not assembled any of these hoses before but I've got instructions and how hard can it be? Famous last words. So the first thing I need to do is separate the uh, braided outer from the inner PTFE core which actually looks like it's done quite well itself. And the reason for this is to allow the um, olive to slide over the inner PTFE line. Oh no, I've done it wrong. It's okay, I can get away with it. I forgot, first you need to slide this end on because it won't go on, but I can be a bit cheeky and just slide it over the other end instead. Crisis averted. That could have been bad. So then you got the olive from there, slides over the core, I said it slides over the core, come on you motherfucker. Just gonna push down to make sure the olive is seated. And then, don't know what you can see, but that's all nicely squarely seated against the end of the tube. Next up, just going to give everything a bit of a lube on the threads and on that end bit. Then, I need to push this in. So now I've just got to get that nut to engage with those threads, pulling it all together. Now I can feel that's engaging nicely. Now here comes the tricky bit, because I don't have AN spanners, and also these are Imperial, I don't even own Imperial spanners. I'm going to break out the thumb detecting nut fucker. I'm going to tape up inside just so hopefully it won't damage this at all. And then just tighten this in. Basically you've got to keep going until that gap there is about one millimetre at the moment, like two or three. So I'll put some thick electrical tape over instead, hopefully that won't wear through as quickly as the masking tape. But there we go. If you excuse the fact that I wore straight through the coating on the aluminium, that's pretty good. Originally I was hoping to use this small pipe cutter to just cut the end off this. But unfortunately there's not enough room to spin it all the way around. And obviously you can't use anything that will make sparks because this is a fuel line, so hacksaw it is. And even this is going to be a challenge. Done! <sighs> I've officially found the third most tedious job on this car. I was able to get the flared end off, which means I should be able to get this off and get a compression fitting on. That butt up onto there like that. Run along the firewall like that. And then banjo bolt goes there. Plenty of leeway. Let's cut that down. Just gonna cut down any of the little stragglers that are longer than the rest. Just give that a little bit of a 
adjustment. This time I'm actually going to remember to put the hose end on first because otherwise I'm fucked. There we go. Now I can safely remove the masking tape. And from this point on it's pretty much the same as last time. And there we have it, my replacement hose for this one, for like, what, quarter of the price, if that? Assuming it works, so next up, bid it to the car. Right, hopefully now that should be enough. Yes, there we go, that's on. This goes into the bottom of the fuel filter. Hopefully. So everything is now in from fuel tank right down to the bottom of the filter. Just need to tighten everything up and we're good. And there we have from the bottom of the fuel filter running along the firewall and then connected onto the original hard line. A couple of things I still want to do. I want to put something just like a little bit of rubber insulation there to stop this rubbing and then that's where the original hose mounted so I'll just get a p-clip or two just to secure that to the firewall so hopefully now this little rubber doodle slides along there ah oh, meant to be and that's how you do shit on the cheap. And there you can see, a bit of reclaimed rubber from the original fuel line. Just gives a little bit of insulation between there and there. Perfect. So I just put all the heat shields back in and made sure that the new fuel line isn't rubbing. I actually put a uh, P-clamp drilled into the heat shield from behind. So it'd be a bit awkward to remove in future, but at least it holds it in place so that, you know, that it's not going anywhere and it's also not going to rub on anything. So that's all good. Uh, while I was here, I replaced all the hardware holding this in because it had all gone really rusty. So, that is this section of the car sorted. And we're back! Yes, <laughs> and those are now the two things that stopped us fixing the, um, the car that time when I tried to fix it in a week. The sump is sorted, the fuel line is sorted. We don't know if either of them actually work until the engine's back in and running, so that'll be a surprise for everyone, but... Hopefully, she's good. We can start reassembly. Yes. I like that you always say we. Well, when was the last time I did anything on that car? When you were, I mean, you were pregnant, but not very. So, like, in fact, it's when we got the engine out. I think. Did you ever? Oh yeah, that's probably about right. I, yeah, I think, I think you were just pregnant then, and then yeah, that's. Well, I'm going to need your help getting the engine back in. So, and plus, I still think of it as a team effort, even if you know lately it's only been able to be me working on the car. You're there in spirit, and sometimes making me cake. Yep, made a damn good lemon cake. Yeah, or messing with my socks. Look, I don't know how well you can see, but... April Fools! <laughs> that was the April Fools joke. But I like the fact that you, you paired, even though you unpaired my socks, you've made sure they were similar types of socks. Yes, well... I appreciate the consideration. Not an animal, you can't <laughs> just have different thicknesses of socks. That is true, I'd walk around in circles. So yeah, things are moving. Next time will finally be the timing belt, which I've been threatening to do for so about a year. So what's left to do? Uh, timing belt on the engine. Uh, the coolant pipes and the vacuum hoses. And then I think it's just the engine back in the car. Oh, okay. Obviously that's a big job in and of itself. Yeah, but... Yeah. Um, Thanks again to the Petrinas. Of course, and your names will appear. And if there's been any new ones, 
sorry we haven't mentioned you by name because we actually filmed this well in advance and just changed our t-shirts yeah. so it's all trickery I, I actually didn't change my t-shirt i put a jumper on oh smart yes i thought so yes very proud of you thank you <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll call it there yeah let's go to good bed good night is your stomach rumbling yeah can you hear it yeah, yeah. i eat too much pizza and cake <laughs> Hello. Welcome Hello. to Engines Welcome and Unfinished Business. Welcome to Engines business. and Unfinished Business.